Again, by the wonders of modern technology, could you give a, a warm welcome to Don Buick. Well, thank you so much. Uh, let me check first to make sure that you can hear me okay. I assume that uh, the technology is working. Um, please let me know if there are any problems. Uh, I'm speaking to you from the United States. I dearly wish that I were speaking to you in Wales itself. I've had many, many visits to your lovely country. I feel honored to be serving uh, for now over a decade as an international Bevan Commission member. And um, I love every single visit. So I look forward to being with you in person as soon as I can. Um, I'm here today to talk about integrated care, uh, a topic that is, um, is a worldwide topic, not just in Wales. And I want to draw a bit of uh, uh, a bigger picture of what that means. And most importantly, to suggest to you something I've felt for some time, which is that Wales uh, can lead, uh, not just for its own purposes and meeting the needs of the people of your country, but at an international level, I see the potential in Wales of uh, offering an example for countries all over the world about what truly integrated, seamless population-based care can look like. That's a lot of words, uh, and I hope I can give it some more texture in the next uh, the next few minutes. Um, the um, let me begin by introducing you to my wife Anne, uh, uh, my wife of nearly fifty years, um, and uh, uh, an amazing person. Uh, Anne is an expert on energy and environment, and trying hard to save the planet. Uh, and uh, she is an attorney by training. And also quite an athlete. Uh, Anne, at uh, our current age, is not daunted at all. And her, a typical day is likely to find her on a bicycle ride of uh, perhaps 30 or 40 miles sometimes on her magical electric assist uh, e-trike, which you, you see here. Um, I don't know a more active person, which is uh, why we were somewhat perplexed about a year ago in uh, in the early in the spring of uh, 2022, when suddenly her capacity to do the exercise started to wane, uh, she had trouble walking, trouble, uh, just trouble with energy, and we didn't know why. Uh, it all came clear in uh, early August of uh, 2022, when when we realized that due to a pacemaker wire in Anne's heart, her tricuspid valve, one of the four valves of the heart, had been destroyed by that tricuspid valve wire, the wire that went through the valve. And so she had no tricuspid valve functionally and was in congestive heart failure. Uh, then the magic came. Uh, we had the benefit of referral to a, a wonderful team of uh, cardiologists, cardiac surgeons, and others at a Massachusetts teaching hospital, a Harvard-affiliated hospital, Massachusetts General. And on August 2nd, Anne underwent a tricuspid valve replacement through open heart surgery. As Anne puts it, open heart surgery is not for wimps. Uh, it's a very difficult uh, journey. Uh, for uh, two weeks, uh, Anne walked on the edge of uh, difficulties with uh, recovery from that in intensive care uh, as a marvelous team of, I would say, several score doctors, nurses, technicians, uh, uh, a complex environment of many, many people worked to get her back in order. And the spoiler alert is it worked brilliantly. Uh, now, a year later, Anne can ride even farther on her magical uh, trike and uh, can yesterday uh, did a swim of uh, two thirds of a mile. Um, it's, it's a remarkable story. And it, it, I could call it a miracle, but it's not a miracle. It was intentional. It's the intentional result of collaborative action of a complex team to pull her through into uh, even healthier status than before she went through this difficult journey. Why did it work? Well, it worked because there was a system at work, a complex collection of factors, uh, all orchestrated, all intentional, all led to uh, put at Anne's service uh, the best, not just the best technical medicine in the world, but I would say the best caring that I may have ever seen. Uh, I, years ago, when I got into the field of quality in healthcare, I studied quality in other industries and had the benefit of meeting uh, leaders from a chemical company called Sigma Aldridge, Aldridge that was a, a 
amazingly successful company. And I said, why does this work here? And the CEO, I remember, said, well, three things, common systems, common knowledge, unconditional teamwork, um, common systems, uh, agreeing to standardizing uh, what it makes sense to standardize so that by simplifying what we do, uh, combining efforts around a common template, uh, we make work easier for everyone and much, much more reliable, not chaos, orderliness, common knowledge. No one owns the knowledge. What 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 I know, you can know. And what you know, I can know. And so um, the, the benefits of growing knowledge, either scientific knowledge or in, in the case of the care of a patient, clinical knowledge uh, uh, helps everyone. An unconditional team, what I have is yours and what you have is mine. We can We can constantly share. Instead of ring fencing, we move resources across boundaries. Now, that's what I saw in Ann's surgery. Uh, absolutely standardized systems that everyone agreed to based on the best possible knowledge in the world. Uh, a sharing of knowledge, not just with, among the clinicians and others, but but with, with Ann and me. We were part of the team. And what anyone knew, everyone knew. Total transparency and unconditional teamwork, uh, respect, uh, the idea that uh, if the uh, lowest ranked person in the system knew something that could help, that person could offer that knowledge and it would be used. Uh, all this was infused with a with a feeling of transparency and communication and openness. Anything we wanted to know, we could know. Uh, all all was available, and a focus on what mattered. What mattered to Anne? This constant inquiry uh, with Anne about how she wanted things, uh, in which the professional dominance that sometimes takes us away from a true focus on patient need wasn't present. Um, Anne was the boss in almost all things. And technical skills everywhere, everywhere, right down to the housekeepers and the, the new junior nurses, a, a deference to expert, expertise, which is a characteristic of high reliability organizations. Whatever, if the lowest status person in the room knew something that could help, the deference was to that person, not to the person in a white coat or with a long string of degrees after his or her name. All the time we were oriented. When we were confused as patients, they were not confused. This is what a high performing system looks like. And frankly, it's the only way to get a patient through something as complex as open heart surgery or advanced chemotherapy or organ transplant or some of the modern miracles that we deal with. Now, that's a story about a patient. What about the system, the overall care system, like in my country or yours? In, in the United States today, we're somewhat on our heels. Uh, the healthcare system is in enormous difficulty. Uh, we have high rates now of patient of errors in patient's care. We we know about that. We need to reinvest in, in patient safety. Weights and delays are growing as they are in the UK. We now understand much more about diagnostic errors. The number one topic on our agenda as executives is workforce burnout. The workforce is slowly getting demoralized uh, and leaving medicine. Uh, patients are in distress, including in my country, financial distress. Bankruptcy is the is is the consequence the, the healthcare is the healthcare medical debt is the largest cause of bankruptcy in the United States. Our costs are out of control now, approaching twenty percent of our gross domestic product. And beyond all that, we know in a way the healthcare system is not what we need to be doing in order to restore health. We have the wonderful work, for example, of Sir Michael Marmot, a Be Bevan commissioner, by the way, uh, to uh, try to refocus energies in nations on things that really do affect health, that really do produce health and well being. The experiences of children in their early years, uh, strong education systems, uh, protected workplaces, uh, care of elders, uh, uh, commun uh, care of community infrastructures, transport, transportation and nutrition and uh, social justice and energy and environment. Uh, we are overloaded with measurements and people feel battered by the number of metrics we have not organized around really meeting the needs of patients. As Sir Terry mentioned, all of this is happening on a moving platform as new technologies and artificial intelligence and others enter the scene full of potential, but also full of risks. And in my country, the kind of commercialization, the proletarianization of healthcare as mergers, acquisitions, and market forces take over. And the result has been a lot of harm in the country. Now, we've known this for a long time. Back in 2001, the National Academy of Medicine produced a report called Crossing the Quality Chasm. And, and that report said something really important, which was the current 
system and its form and habits and environment is incapable of meeting the needs of the American people. That's a strong word, incapable. It means no matter how hard we try, the pursuit of better health, uh, better care and lower cost will elude us without a redesigned way to deliver care. That's a profoundly important statement from a very conservative organization, our National Academy of Medicine. Uh, 22 years later, the, 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 the quest remains uh, unsatisfied. The, the, the aim not achieved. Our system still performs way below the needs of American health care and the potential of an integrated system. Uh, we have the model in Anne's care, as we know, we can come together and do extremely complicated things together when we wish to, when it's about an individual patient. But can we do it when the need is for a national uh, set of goals, a better experience of care for all patients, no matter who they are, uh, better health for populations, which, as Sir Michael Marmot has pointed out, uh, among many others, cannot be achieved through health care? and lower per capita cost in my country and your country controlled per capita cost in which we have the retention of resources and are able to devote those resources to other uses. Um, the performance in American healthcare should you would think drive us toward change, but strangely, elusively, frustratingly, it does not. Our system has been unable to move to a new set of, of a new configuration uh, able to achieve the triple aim. Now, my country is not alone, nor is yours, in this series of challenges. Enormous stresses on the healthcare workforce at all levels. The constant now looming threat of 21st century threats, uh, not just pandemics, but uh, other forms of um, global change threatening the well being of our populations, rising costs, uh, under investment and improvement of the quality of care. Uh, social determinants of health as a focus remain outside the major investments of many nations around the world, and a deepening concern for equity so that the benefits of health and well-being are available to all, not just confined to those who happen to have wealth or position or status. And then this growing and crucial understanding that health care cannot create health. Health care is absolutely essential. My wife would not be with us today without brilliant health care, and no one should compromise anywhere in any nation on the delivery of care. But do not expect that health care will produce health. It cannot. What can is investment in the well-being of children, strong education systems, protected workplaces, compassionate care and support of elders, uh, community infrastructures, and, an, and a deep investment in social justice, in equity, in each other. Um, Nation by nation, there are efforts to change this, to, to reconfigure systems so they're capable of achieving that, that triple aim. Uh, integrated care systems are now developing everywhere. Uh, Population-based systems organize not around institutions, hospitals, uh, clinician practices, ambulances, uh, and, and, and so on, but, but the idea of a roof a house in which all who care for patients um, work together with the focus on a population instead of on the task within an institution. Uh, uh, your neighboring nation, England, is reorganizing its whole national health service around uh, 40 so or so integrated care systems. Um, in, in, in some countries, the emphasis is on communities and localities to accomplish that. Scotland, for example, has a long history of working with its municipalities to achieve better health and well-being and truly integrated investment. And Sweden has, for a long time, at, its, at the county or regional level, tried to organize around population needs uh, through municipal leadership. In my country, we are kind of hooked, to my regret, on market-based solutions. There's this almost unchallengeable belief in the United States that if we get market forces correct, that the healthcare system will correct. I no longer believe that. It comes under the guise of value-based care, and we continue to fiddle with payment mechanisms and contingencies and rewards and punishments as if somehow if we tweak the right dials, the answer will appear. I don't think that's the case, and happy in Q&A to answer that. Uh, to address that. One really exciting example of comprehensive redesign is underway in Singapore, a small country like you, 
uh, in population. And Singapore has, uh, for some time now, beginning a year ago, uh, focused on what they're calling the healthier Singapore strategy. It's a, it's a brilliant strategy, a comprehensive look at the entire nation with respect to what has to happen to health and health care to make a rather healthy country even healthier and to make a rather efficient country even more efficient in health. Uh, the idea is a total mobilization of uh, the existing health system, especially GPs and the family physicians, uh, working toward health producing plans for individuals and enlisting community agencies, not just healthcare agencies in that pursuit and doing it through empanelment so that every Singaporean has a source of care and then underlying structures in the uh, Singapore Health Service to support all of the above. It's an interesting example of complete approach. Now, if any of this is to succeed, there's a set of essential components in my view. The first is to act like a system, just around as in Anne's cardiac care, that we're all in this together and everyone depends on everyone else and we have to work together in order to achieve it. There is no hero in the pursuit of transformative care. It has to be everyone using common systems, common knowledge, and unconditional teamwork. All infused and energized by a pervasive sense that we're in it together, solidarity, communality, mutual caring. I no longer believe that markets hold the answer. What will hold the answer is a sense of interdependency, caring, respect, and even love, a sense that we are in this together. Without that, I don't think integrated care is going to work, all informed by science, because everything we want to do to improve populations and improve healthcare ought to rest and can rest on a strong foundation of science-based change. And here's the key message I want to leave with you. Wales has it all. Of all the many nations on earth that I get to work with in my privileged life, um, when I visit Wales, I see the, the material, the ethos, the culture, the resources, the history that ought to allow Wales to move toward a completely integrated system of care at the national level, kind of modeled on the sort of complete organization of care and caring that uh, my wife and I benefited from. Uh, that means everyone's in, all the way from patients and the population who ought to be in the driver's seat to the microsystems, the, the, the office practices, the teamlets, the polyclinics, the, the, the lo localities, uh, supported by the meso system, the organizations, existing organizations like integrated care systems, and then by the policy environment, right up to how the entire National Health Service is led, payment, training, policy. Um, all together, a systems framework. Everyone would see themselves as located somewhere on this map of the integrated systems work. Wales' history of uh, systems development and the ability to uh, commit to purpose and then organize around it is throughout your history. And Niren Bevan uh, 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 said, no society can legitimately call itself civilized if a sick person is denied medical aid because of lack of means. And he, and he, in his brilliance, with brilliant colleagues, was able to birth the most uh, important example of a national health system in, in the world, the National Health Service. Uh, Sir Mansell Aylward, uh, my friend and admired, much admired colleague, he to me represents the, the perfect bridge between healthcare delivery and understanding the true agents of health and well-being in a society. He is the inventor of the Bevan Commission itself, and also, I think, the intellectual spirit behind the framework the Bevan Commission and Wales now uses to think about redesign the prudent healthcare system, which I will talk about shortly. Uh, Sir Mansell is uh, an amazing leader. Uh, Archibald Co Cochran changed the way the whole world thinks about the use of evidence. Uh, fostering the investments in the kinds of designs of clinical trials and investment that um, that actually can lead uh, to, to to investing in care exactly when it can work, all informed by an understanding of the importance of equity. And then, to me, maybe the greatest Welsh hero of all, uh, Julian Tudor Hart. Uh, Tudor Hart. Um, understood more than almost any person of the century, 
the nexus of relationship between the way communities work and the way health is generated. He was deeply concerned about inequity and angry about the way in which healthcare through, uh, through designs that can't work perpetuate inequity uh, in uh, developed countries. Um, I sometimes think if we would follow Tudor Hart's vision, we would be producing the kind of healthcare system we really need. Those are the leaders of the past, the leaders of today, like uh, Judith Paget and uh, Helen Housen, you know, able to articulate in a modern sense uh, the kinds of needs for uh, integrated approaches to care that we really need. Uh, I, I know my fellow Bevan commissioners and the co-chairs will uh, join me in, in thanking Helen for extraordinary leadership of this investment in a public-private partnership in Wales to generate um, a vision, uh, action for the future. Now, the foundational uh, design uh, Wales has produced the through the Bevan Commission with Sir Mansell's extraordinary leadership, the prudent healthcare system. As many of you know, if you've heard me speak before about Wales, this to me is the, 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 the best single framework for redesign that I've encountered in, in, uh, in my work around the world. An investment in co-production and partnership with patients and families and communities, as the team did with Anne when they asked what mattered to her. Uh, prioritizing the needs of the people uh, in the greatest need. Uh, care for those with the greatest need comes first. That's a moral investment in, in any nation and key to the production of a healthy society. Doing only what is needed according to science and to do no harm, patient safety and protection against harm from healthcare ought to be a fundamental tenet of the design of health and healthcare systems. And then using the evidence, as Archie Cochran would have us do, to reduce inappropriate variation, common systems, common knowledge, unconditional teamwork based on evidence-based approaches. A brilliant framework for the redesign of the kind of healthcare system we all need. Wales has it all. You have those prudent healthcare design principles. You have a strong legacy investments in the science of health, as uh, Sir Mansell and Archie Cochran point, uh, exemplify a legacy of science-based policy. Deep concern for equity is articulated by Nye Bevan and others in your distinguished history. And I would say a communitarian ethos. When I'm in Wales, I feel like I'm in a family. Wales seems to care about everyone. Not always. It's not easy. But there is a sense in Wales is that I find in few other countries of uh, pride and dignity and respect for each other that is the foundation of a truly integrated approach. And you're the right size. The Bevan Commission itself exemplifies how getting the right people in the room, you could basically assemble and make a decision that my country, so big, so fragmented, so so tortured by, by uh, fragmentation, uh, just can't. Uh, so Wales, you you can do this. Um, the biggest question I can leave you with um, before we move to questions and answers is, will you do this together? There is no other option. It's either all together or not at all. Uh, what I see in Wales when I have the privilege of working with you and your colleagues and my wonderful friends on the Bevan Commission is, is the potential to be together in a way that, frankly, very few other countries can. So, so thank you so much for the chance to work with you to be with you to uh to to, to share these thoughts um i uh, i i regard it as a great privilege to have been able to uh to work with your your marvelous country i look forward to staying in touch and to the next round of your achievements thank you